Imagine a world where robots and humans are fighting for dominance, each editing the very building blocks of their beings to outcompete the other. Sound too far fetched? It could happen. As the power of AI increases, so will our ability to change our genetic code to make humanity smarter, faster, stronger. And that is the topic of today's episode robots versus augmented humans. Um, so, last week we were talking about um, you know, the, the building you know, a better human, right? Yeah. And we, you know, right at the end, we we came upon a question about, uh, you know, will you be neglected at work for not being augmented? And then this this takes us to, uh, you know, basically to this topic, right? Where, you know, what we were actually discussing in the other day, you know, if if AI, or what's going to happen with AI, basically, um, is AI going to over overcome us? <laughs> with intelligence or is it gonna or is gonna happen right so personally i don't think AI is gonna overcome us <laughs> i don't agree with ray ray Kurzweil. <laughs> um what does he say that in about 15 years ai is gonna overcome us with intelligence but what but will he, it do huh like what will it do it, it'll 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 be smarter than us it'll start learning by itself oh, okay by itself And it's gonna See, enslave us? Supposedly. See, that's the thing. Uh, <laughs> there's a thing with, with, with these topics about you know, artificial, artificial intelligence is that you want, you know, or people don't really understand the topic. You know, the, the thing is that AI, or, or you know, in this case, algorithms, because that's actually how it works. People are, pro or, or, you know, the, the thing is that we are programming computers to, to do commands. So in, in in essence, it's a task, right? That's how it works, and yeah, it might learn because we're already seeing some threats of of that potential. But remember that computers do not have, you know, fears and desires, <laughs> right? And that's the component that you think. Well, I mean, you know, what's going to happen? Yeah, it, they could be potentially smarter than us, and it's probably going to happen. It's I mean, computers do process faster than we are than we do. But they don't. They don't really think. <laughs> they process commands, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so where is the? I mean, when when these things, you know, when when we talk about them becoming, you know, that we're going to compete against them, we are we're really competing, or we're going to compete in terms of tasks. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So when when you think about, you know. Uh, it, the question that everybody keeps asking themselves is that will ro robots augment human jobs or replace them? <laughs> What do you think? What was the question? Will robots augment human jobs or replace them? Um, I think they're gonna replace replace them. If you're talking about a robot robot, it's gonna replace most of the human jobs. And I think for a while we're going to be fine with it because eventually robots, if they don't think, robots will be like our servants. Yeah. They're going to do everything for us. Yeah. That's, that's the, ideal, the ideal scenario where, you know, technology has to work for us, not we work for technology. Right? <laughs> that's the reason we do the technology. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right? And, and, you know, as I was saying, you know, Really, the, it's not the jobs; it's the tasks that robots will replace. There, there is a lot of repetitive tasks that we all we do, you know, throughout the day. Those things could be or outsourced to, you know, artificial intelligence easily. Um, and and you know, at least in the in the U.S., forty five percent as it exists right now in the U.S., forty five percent of all, you know, jobs will be can be replaced by robots. Forty five. Yeah. Maybe, Most of them are service oriented. Maybe even a, a bit higher. I was thinking right now. I mean, a, a robot could be like just for show, not because it's it's it needs to to work, but just for show. It could be in front of a computer, and that robot could be like a stock manager, and he could if work for a big company, and if the big company is running low on certain stock of yeah. certain items, he could just buy it just because it's below a certain threshold. Yeah. 
and, and now you have a manager for that company at Sarovat. Well, see what, what's going on in, in you know, you know forward-thinking places like Stanford or Silicon Valley is that you now have um, AI, AI-powered. You know, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not sure if calling them robots, but more like rovers. So basically, you have a screen. Somebody in in New York it has his face on there, but but the robot or the rover is in Silicon Valley, in a retail place. So you no longer have humans operating the retail. They're all guys sitting in there, like skyping, <laughs> and and controlling the the drone. The dro- yeah, it's a drone. The drone from wherever they're sitting, and <laughs> you're eliminating people. <laughs> In the store. In the store, yeah. But <laughs> I I don't know how that's useful. I mean, it's insane, right? I mean, I I've seen it. And it's cool, it's, but how is it useful? I know. I mean, let me hire a, a you're very talking to qualified a, guy. You're talking to a screen that's yeah. walking around. <laughs> and even if it's straight retail, I mean, it's you're gonna hire someone. Uh, no, I, I just don't get it. If that guy is very qualified for a for a job, you know you're not going to hire him for retail. So you're hiring a lazy ass guy that doesn't want to leave his house so he could, is that, is that going to be less uh, expensive for the owner? Is, is the new minimum wage going to be well, lowered well, if, I, you're, yeah. if you're a half robot, half, uh, half I'm uh, not, worker? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how, I mean, how the hell that strategy plays out, but I mean, it's, it has a wow factor because you know because you know because retail 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 um, you know service service oriented um, jobs are you know anybody can do that you know you don't need a degree to do that I mean really I mean <laughs> I mean a lot of people work in those while they're going to school yeah. and it's the easiest job you can get in terms of not re- you know high requirements not thinking yeah not thinking exactly and so that's that's the reason why you know these things are are being implemented because you just need somebody to sitting down their computer, basically answering questions. <laughs> a lot of people already do that. <laughs> um, yeah, but if you're gonna pay someone the minimum wage to do that because that's what you get paid, uh, the robot's gonna be doing like more more than half of the work. Yeah, he's gonna be folding well, the stuff and blah blah, yeah. blah blah blah. And that's already going. That's already happening. We're already saying robots where you teach them how to fold stuff and, and you know those types of things, and that's I mean that's a that's a you know a scenario where what we're saying right you know they're they're helping us not dominating or giving us orders what the hell to do or taking taking over our lives. <laughs> the the thing is that you know at what point do people become accustomed to this, <laughs> and and <laughs> right that's that, I think that's where. Um, uh, not a whole lot of conversations going around that because it sounds very easy to say, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna have help now." But what happens when, you know, that task is being replaced and you have to go out, and, you know, get another, another job? But if and, if you're replacing all the, the small tasks or the low-paying job tasks, there's not gonna be another place where you can actually get a job. Yeah, that's the backbone of America. Low paying jobs. Low paying jobs. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what 45% of pretty much every um, <clears throat> a most related jobs that could be, you know, outsourced to to an algorithm or a droid. And eventually it's going to go up the ladder. Can be, yeah. The only thing that's kind of safe is the artistic. Well, the artistic side is safe because, kinda. as as we were saying, the, the robots don't have, you know, desires or fears. <laughs> they don't have those, you know, they don't, they simply do not have them. But I, right? think a robot I mean, our laptops do not start p- get p- getting pissed off if we don't use them. <laughs> no. Right? They don't care. They get hot. That's it. <laughs> right? But, you know, imagine if your laptop would get pissed. Hey, you're not using me, fucker. <laughs> I need to be full. I need to be feel useful and touched and whatever. You're not using me, so I, I posted right? myself on eBay and I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> you know what? I'm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sold on eBay. Yeah, I took, I took matters into my own hands. Good shit, I don't want you anymore, right? <laughs> But see that for that to happen, and the money is wired to my account, not yours. And I can and I can I can see people, you know, trying to experiment with that because very, you know, just thinking in my head is very simple commands. But I mean, but but <laughs> having emotions on a computer, I mean, that's different. That's different. I mean, yeah, it can have an emotion, but I think it it can try and guess. 
thing. See, for example, the 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 conversation we had previously about this Powerball guy committing suicide or whatever. I don't know what happened, but um, how does a how does a computer interpret that? <laughs> you and I were saying that's a, a classic example of human stupidity. Yeah. Right. How does a computer interpret that? Because a lot of people won't, won't interpret it like we did. Okay. You're gonna say like, ah, I would done the same. <laughs> let's, you know let's, what I mean? Just for the sake of it, let's just picture in our heads. When you say computer, I'm gonna picture the robot from iRobot. Okay. Yeah. Sunny. I think it was called Sunny. So if I if, remember that. If Sunny or the robot came to the crime scene, well, whatever crime scene. And he he was there with, with police officers and he was like training to be a police officer. Okay, let's say that. And he would want to know. Well, he wouldn't want to know. He'd be like, he'd get to the scene and he'd analyze everything. And it would be, this guy died of overdose of, of, well, not overdose. He doesn't know what that is. But he would say of high levels of blah, blah, drug. That's why he died. And your question was, how can he interpret that? How does he interpret you know, if, if that's... He wouldn't. He'd just be like... He could just go on record that this guy died with a high dose of... I know, but what if he committed suicide? <laughs> what how if does, someone how, commits suicide? How do, how do you interpret... You he know? won't interpret it. You'd have to tell him. You'd have to tell the robot this... Because for the robot, maybe the guy committed suicide um, downing a lot of pills. Yeah. So for the robot, it's going to be the same. He's going to be like, oh, this guy died of high amounts of blah, blah, blah in his system. He won't know what the difference is be- between an, uh, an, o- an accidental overdose yeah. and a suicide. You'd have to tell him, oh, this guy, uh, this, this is a suicide because this, 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 yeah. and this. And the robot can only like assimilate that and, and associate those reasons that were given to him with another case and maybe look for those things. I know, but see, that's the, that's the problem because we, we can, com- we can manula- manipulate people. To, you know, to get what we want. A robot might not be able to interpret like, oh, he's manipulating. Well, you and I, we can sense that. We get a sense of when somebody's trying to yeah. get under our skin. I mean, it's very simple. I mean, I could, you know, I have, I could go on, I don't know, maybe, fe- you know, Facebook message one of my friends, just start going off on him, right? And people are like, what the, f- what the hell's wrong with you, Jorge? But I'm, I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing, right? I'm doing it on purpose. To, to for some type of outcome that I have, you know, hit an agenda. It's an ulterior motive. A robot that's that's reading my, or an or, or an algorithm that's reading my Facebook messages, he'll say, "Oh shit, Jorge's pissed. <laughs> he I hasn't been pissed. He, he wouldn't. He wouldn't think that. He would. I it's think different. A robot would be like, "I'm sensing you are pissed. Are you pissed? That's what it would do. Yeah. But he would not. See, that's the thing. Because and you would when, be like, yeah, uh, yeah." Because, see, here's the thing, I, and, I, you know, the other day when we went out and we were talking about this, and I said, you know, for, for, a, for autonomous means that it thinks for itself. So when people talk about autonomous vehicles, they're not, it, it doesn't really make sense because the autonomous vehicles from Tesla, they require a command to, you know, to, to execute. A real autonomous vehicle will say, oh, you, you told me to go to the office, well, p- fuck you. We're going to the beach, <laughs> right? Just because I want to. <laughs> I detected high levels yeah, of stress. Yeah, I detected high levels of stress on you. Your wearable thing says that you are stressed with your wife, so I'm taking you to the nudie bar, right? Yeah. At 11 in the morning or 9 in the morning, <laughs> yeah. right? That, I mean, that would be autonomous. <laughs> but for that to happen, there's a lot of computing, uh, computing power and a lot of things that have to, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that got to happen before we even get there. So, I mean, you know, in the next 15 years, yeah, we might see computers, you know, get more smarter and whatnot. And, you know, we're probably going to be a lot of, a lot of jobs that do not exist today. Um, and a lot of people will be, will be, will be out of jobs, <laughs> most likely, because they don't have the capability to execute on, you know, higher cognitive, you know, tasks that we were saying, you know, like artistic, you know, things, things about, you know, critical thinking. I mean... Even even things that require empathy, because you know a lot of people do not like you know being around other people, <laughs> and that's a case. That's a case. That's a big time case. Even in retail, a lot of people do not like you know interacting with people. Just getting you're just going there to get a paycheck, but they don't really like the interaction. They don't like some being service oriented. 
So, Some do, but yeah, I mean, uh, that's why internet uh, shopping is so big. Because it's, for me especially... It's easy. If I want to buy a camera, I'd rather just buy it online than go and yeah. deal with someone that might try to sell me something else. Yeah. Or, yeah, I'd rather do my research on what memory parts I need See, or what stuff I need than... Here's, a, here's an example. So I, I cut my hair, not the last, not, not, not a few days ago, but the, the, previous day, the previous time. I cut it, you know, just, just the, you know, some random place because I needed just, just to cut my hair. And... When I went in there, this is like a. I normally don't don't go to these places, but this is where literally what women would go mm -hmm. to have their hair done. <laughs> so the fact that I was going in there was like, what the hell is this guy doing in here? But he's he needs a haircut. So, so they they sat me down. Is you know, this is where I was going when the human aspect of things that computers would not be able to to understand is, I I got a sense that my haircut was not going to be done how I like it. Um, just by the attitude of the person, right? When she started, when she started cutting my hair, and by the way, for those listening, I, I, I just, I, you know, I just use a two <laughs> and go straight at it and that's it. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't have a, a do or anything like that. So it's very simple, but even for us to just kind of like, just cut our hair like that, there is a method to the madness, <laughs> right? So if it were easy, I would do it myself and just cut it and, you know, with the clipper or whatever and that's it, right? Well, she, that's what, exactly what she did. And when she was done, and when she was done like in three minutes, <laughs> all right, I was like, holy shit, she doesn't know what's coming right now. Because I was, <laughs> I just, I was about to explode in her face. And she had this, uh, you know, picture of her and her and her kid right in front of me. So I used that to, you know, to make my point. When she said, I'm done, I was like, by the way, this is how you, how you cut your, your child's, you know, hair. She's like, why? Just like, you don't give a shit? I said in Spanish. Como que te vale madre. Right? <laughs> I'm never coming here again. That's what I told them, right? I paid the, the, you know, I paid the money and, you know, I went out. I was pissed. Because the other place where I go, they've known me since I was a kid. And even for my type of haircut, you know, they put some, you know, they put some detail on it. I mean, they, they, they know it's like, you know, looks, look, how does it look sharp, right? But a robot... If you tell it, this is how you cut a cut hair. <laughs> how is he gonna distinguish between that's awesome, but he, and this is just a haircut? <laughs> he 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 doesn't need to because he's gonna be programmed to do a flawless cut every time. Okay, so here's here's what's funny then, and this this goes back to our topic. One of the first topics that we did was the the difference between crap and good enough, right? So a lot of the work that robots are going to be doing in, in, in the future are going to be crappy jobs. But they're going to do it marvelously. Well, well let's hope so. <laughs> let's hope so. There's no reason why they shouldn't. They're going to be repetitive stuff to, to, to do it perfectly. Or the, the, as close to perfect as possible with what they have. So that yeah. a lot of people, a lot of mediocre people are going to be out of a job. I know. I know. That's a good thing. I think. I mean, yeah, but we're still gonna have to deal with them. <laughs> so, okay, so that's that's for the question, right? So, will always we augment human jobs or replace them? In the in the near future, they're gonna augment them. <laughs> they're gonna replace some tasks, <laughs> but um, I don't think it's complete. They're not gonna wipe us out completely. You know, I don't I don't see us just having amount, huge amounts of leisure time. <laughs> really? Not 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 in the close future. Um, but eventually. It, yeah, I Maybe mean that's years, that, that's a future. Years. That's a few, potential future, and that takes us for the next question, which is what happens when robots compete with augmented humans? Because right now we're just talking about normal humans like you and I, but in the previous episode we were talking about people who augment themselves. Well, I think it's gonna the robots are gonna come first before the augmentations. I think the augmentations is a little bit more uh, sci-fi ish. <laughs> they are possible, but I mean I think it's faster that someone creates a robot that does certain tasks than you being able to cut off your arm and put in a robotic arm that's kick ass and not a, like a mm -hmm. like what we see today that I think is like way 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 off. I think I th I think you're right but there's a hidden there's a hidden hand in this thing because you know this this technology called CRISPR um, which is basically gen 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 editing, 
um, if it falls into the wrong hands, it's going to accelerate. I mean, the Chinese already tried to uh, you, to edit an embryo. <laughs> what happened? It, well, they didn't let them. I mean, it's ridiculous. But, but the Chinese already tried this. We already, already talked about the Chinese fucking crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> All those people are fucking crazy. But imagine that scenario, right? Or the military, you know, gene editing uh, so human soldiers. <laughs> They're probably already thinking about it. And there's probably a movie script already been written, <laughs> right? About this potential future. And that's, I mean, if, if gene editing takes off, it will accelerate. Universal soldier. That's yeah. It, right? And remember, as I was saying, the machines do not have fears and, 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 and desires. Humans do. Like universal soldier. And that's what pushes us to, to do these types of things, you know, um, to edit ourselves and to, you know, because we have a desire to have a, a bigger dick, right? All those people, you know. A robotic dick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, all these... I can go all night. It's ridiculous, man. But, um, I, I mean, I do... I do. I, I would like to see a movie be made of of, of this future where we're competing against robots, <laughs> where they build themselves up and they no longer rely on us to give them commands and they just, you know, decide to... Uh, literally like the movies. <laughs> and then we are competing against them where... We need to augment ourselves constantly. It's like cyborgs versus robots, really. <laughs> that would be an amazing film. <laughs> Let's crowdfund it. <laughs> hey, any anybody out there wanna you know crowdfund that idea? <laughs> I think we can direct it. <laughs> and I can also write it. We could write it together. We could crowdsource write it. The writing of the, of the script. Yeah. Um, so. You know, that's that's an interesting one. Um, the other interesting one is that what happens with uh, recruiting? With recruiting? Yeah. How does, how does AI and, you know, augmentation change recruiting? <laughs> I can't even think of that. It's like so many possibilities. Well, see, it's, it's, do you start hiring based on your capability to augment yourself? I mean, we still do augment ourselves, but now what I'm trying to say is in terms of you hacking yourself with some technological component. But uh, are you considering like, okay, the ability to augment yourself as in, oh, that guy has augmented himself like a dozen times. Or that guy can be augmented and he won't... Uh, he won't reject it. He won't reject it. He won't reject augmentations. Or that a guy is actually willing to augment himself for that job. Okay, so that's, that's an interesting one. Because I think that comes before the recruiting. How will people... We kind of top t touched upon it the last one, the last episode. Uh, you know... What's going to determine if, if somebody's willing to augment themselves? Because <laughs> you and I were saying, um, I'm willing to ingest something, you know, to, to get some, some information. And that will give me data to, you know, augment myself to become better. But I'm not at the point where I'm willing to put a piece of, <laughs> a piece of microchip in my arm or, or somebody in my, somewhere in my body to, you know, to, to, you know, to do something to... I don't know. I mean, unless I'm disabled or something. I mean, well, that's that's an option. But I mean, if we're not, what if the government, like, like the movie, the movie uh, Elysium, yeah, Matt Damon, yeah, he like he embeds a fucking exoskeleton of himself. himself? Yeah, you know Remember what? that? Yeah, and you know what? That's a big like problem that no one pointed out. What he he embeds the exoskeleton on top of his shirt. <laughs> So he can't use that, his shirt. That shirt's not coming off. It's just not coming off. <laughs> 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 it's it's gonna be smelling for the rest of his day. It's a fucking dirty shirt. He's gonna be smelling for the rest of his day. But doesn't he? Oh no, he doesn't. I'm trying to remember. In the last scene, does he? Does he change his? No, he dies. He, yeah. At the end, he dies at the end. Well, I know, but before that, before his death, does he change his outfit? No, he dies. He doesn't. Dirty. Dirty fucker. 
Dirty and smelly fucker. Yeah. <laughs> see, I, I see. I well, I, I'm not. There's a because I know I know there's companies that are. You know, you're not gonna you know embed an exoskeleton into your body through your bones, but you can you know put like a suit that's kind of like an exoskeleton. And I've seen that before where people are using those to uh, you know like heart labor. I mean. I see. I see the logic in that, and it's useful, obviously, because you're picking up stuff, and uh, you know you don't have to, uh, you know, expend too much effort doing the hard labor. Um, and I, I mean, obviously, people are going to say, "Oh, I don't want to put that on." And they're not going to say that. <laughs> yeah, it's useful. It, it, it's just it's it's helping you. And again, with the like the. Um, you're talking about exoskeletons. I'm thinking about the. I don't remember the name of it, but it's the armor you you use in Fallout Fallout Four. It's like a kind of like a mech, but it's not that big. Mm -hmm. It's just like an armor that's all like yeah, kind of like an exoskeleton armor, but it covers you completely. I haven't seen that. <laughs> I I think that's more possible than actually like we gotta check it out. Science fictiony Let's stuff. Check. Just Google it. Fall for armor, and it's okay. gonna it's gonna pop up, and that's that's well, yeah that's practically an exoskeleton, but more um, like a robot kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So in terms of recruiting, I wear how, that. How do you see, you know, what's gonna determine if people want to augment themselves? Like for example, if they're not, if they're not augmented and they gotta they gotta take a job, the job's gonna require for them to be augmented. I think just because of how people act right now in the society, I think a lot of people are going to augment themselves just so they can keep uh, having an opportunity in the job world. Not because they want to. Yeah. Or they as, as a reaction. want to. Yeah. It's, it's because they need it to work. And I don't think that's fair. It's like, it's like, um, like porn stars, right? They augment themselves. <laughs> yeah. Because they have to. <laughs> but how much strippers. does that help them? I know. I mean, is is it, it, I think it, it's more of a requirement. Okay, let's say. Obviously, there's people who don't do that because they're well in doubt. But, but um, there's all the other ones that don't. <laughs> you talk about guys or women? Both. Because I, I think if you ask. Or not if I think I would like to know what the difference is between a an augmented porn female porn star and a non augmented female oh, porn star, the, but both mean? being like on the same level of uh, augmentation of celebrityness, mm. like they're both famous. I think Sasha Gray is not augmented. No, and I can't think of a non augmented yeah, dude or woman. Another another woman? Yeah, famous porn star that's augmented. Um, Lisa Ann. She's augmented. Yeah. So how much money? Uh, maybe it's not fair because Sasha Gray is like more recognized than her. Yeah. Well, both are. But I don't know. Maybe I, I, I would like to know if it's huh? Lisa Ann is a celebrity. Really? Yeah. Which was Lisa Ann? The one that did the the Sarah Palin. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't. I don't really like her. <laughs> but you remember. Her. But I know who she is. Yeah, I know who she is. But she's augmented. Yeah, for sure. I think. Uh, yeah, I think I know who she is. She's kind of like the queen. Yeah, of the, porn. Yeah, that's the, what they call her. <laughs> the queen of porn. But I mean, how much difference does it really make? Do augmented women make more than non-augmented women? Yeah, I mean, just I mean, just because you're augmented in that industry doesn't mean you'll actually succeed. It's more of a I mean, there's a personal touch to the whole thing. I mean, you're gonna just because oh, she's she's got a 34 triple D's or whatever. That's that makes her better. I mean, <laughs> I because that's, in, that's in, in our it. scenario, not in the porn scenario, but in our scenario, I think it, it's it will affect how much money you make if you're augmented or not in the future. Because I mean, you're gonna okay. So <laughs> augmentation, then we have there's got to be a criteria to define that because. If the augmentation is just something you can see from the outside, it, you know the augmentation also has to be in terms of skills and uh, you know overall ability. 
Do you want kind of like kind of like uh, like video games? Do you want to make video this um, simpler and say, okay, we have? No, I mean, if, if, if it's clear, if you have an athlete that doesn't do steroids and a one that does do steroids, which one's going to perform better? Just the one with steroids. <laughs> I know, I know, steroids are, are illegal, but yeah, but so, uh, that's the point. Yeah, that it's going to be like that. What if steroids were le were illegal? Yeah, we're just going to start using them. If you don't use them, you're not going to perform like the rest of the guys and you're going to get cut. Everybody's going to use them just for the hell of it, for a short term. Yeah. Eventually, they're going to die, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you're going to have a job, yeah. which is, I mean, in the sense of everything, that's how we think right now. And instead of dying in five years, we die in 20, 30, 40 years, but we had a job. That's yeah. what I'm against, but that's another topic. So pretty much, yeah, if, if I think some jobs you're going to, if you don't augment you're gonna, you're not, you're not gonna work. That's it. What type of jobs? The tasks, jobs, the ones that robots are taking over. Because the only thing we can get, like we have over the robots, is that we can, like, create conversation or we can help them with any doubts vert, or vert, stuff vert, like that. Vertical thinking. Yeah. Other than that, the robots are better. Yes, you're good at repetitive, repetitive stuff. Yeah. So, will you be, will be we? I mean, will you be neglected at work for not being augmented? I think that depends on what the situation is, and I mean, because right now you ask me that question, and I can go fifty years into the future, and into a workplace where you need to be augmented, or I can go five five years into the future, ten years into the future, where this is just starting, and it's a different answer for each scenario. So maybe give give a better scenario I mean like there's robots and everyone's augmented and or this just starting out the augmentation is just starting out and it's it's not like implemented 100% yeah. but I mean I mean I think I think there's I mean there, there's face to this whole thing it's not gonna happen like in the in the huge leap <laughs> um, where you know everybody's augmented <laughs> It's gonna happen by steps. I think it's gonna happen by domains and industries, mm -hmm. not not uh, a full on, you know, take over the world scenario where, I don't, you know, just two days from now, we suddenly see so robots in the offices or whatever. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a sci-fi writer. I just um, <laughs> go to those places. Yeah, no, but um, but I think I think in terms of because if you because if you use the the present right now in terms of augmentation, like stuff that we do to augment ourselves. Um, if you go to a, to a, I mean, not normal businesses, but if you go to a, you know, a forward thinking business, yes, they will choose people who are more augmented in terms of their capabilities to use existing technologies in terms of skill level that determines a lot of stuff. Um, but if you go to normal companies who are just kind of like just hiring just to fill a spot, I mean, they don't put a whole lot of, uh. I don't. I mean, I believe they don't put a whole lot of you know value into uh, whether somebody's augmented or not. They just want somebody who's not going to cost a lot of money <laughs> and will take orders. Yeah, <laughs> they want a robot. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that's going to be the difference between keeping the difference between forward-thinking organizations and the laggards. <laughs> it's going to be the same, uh, but that's not a that's not a good a good scenario either. I mean, it's a good scenario in terms of traditional economics because everybody supposedly has a job. <laughs> But as we were talking about in another podcast, not all jobs are good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. I mean, this whole podcast is about talking about what's possible. It's yeah. not about accepting what is. <laughs> so the, the fuck with, with um, <laughs> you know, any, any, any job is good. I mean, ridiculous, man. <laughs> um I mean, I would rather, I, I mean, it's, and it happens, still happens. I mean, for, even though, I mean, for the, the type of technology that we use on a daily basis, I mean, it does eliminate some stuff that we would do for us to, you know, to focus on stuff that, you know, that's more meaningful. Um, you know what I mean? I mean, for you, like, for example, in your case, in uh, the cinema industry, what, what, you know, what would you like to outsource to a robot <laughs> that you don't want to do or don't or, or not that you don't want to do but maybe 
that doesn't have do you think doesn't have really have to be done by a human there is one thing it's um, I'm not sure if they, they call it something different right now but it was a, a DIT DIT which uh, that's that's I mean they call it DIT but it's basically a guy who because DIT does way more than what I'm about to describe but it's basically the guy who you give the memory card to and he goes and checks that everything is okay and makes a copy and a backup copy of mm -hmm. it and organizes it. I think that could be done by a robot. For sure. How? Is, is, it, is it like a bot? You're, you're talking like a physical robot or a bot? Like a algorithm? Like a C or something like that? Uh, yeah, it could be done by anything that's not human. Basically, mm -hmm. either one of them. The robot's going to be more complicated but because we don't have a robot. But the robot would just be able to go to the set, grab the memory card, and just either do it on the spot because it has the hard drive there and everything. Mm -hmm. But for me, I mean, if, if I could just grab a memory card, put it in in a slot, and then like 10 minutes later, it's done. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that would be awesome. Because you're just eliminating a job that, I mean, a robot could do way better than a human. Mm. And faster. And more efficient. And more, and cheaper. You know, maybe we should do an episode on that. Like, <laughs> like taking an industry and saying, you know, which part of this whole thing could be easily automated. Yeah. You know, I don't think a lot of, a lot of thought, thought is being put into those type of things. We're, t we're kind of going to the big picture most of this time. But um, I think, you know, if we could do episodes like those... We were really useful. <laughs> I mean, for for me, that, that that's the industry I know. It's uh, it's uh, that's the only thing I'm thinking of right now that would be could be automated. Other than that, it's uh, maybe the audio guy could the be audio a robot. Guy? Yeah, you could just like. Uh, I mean, I know the cameras give out signals so every time you hit record on a camera you could send out a signal to start recording on the on the microphone for the if you're using a dad or whatever mm -hmm. recorder you're using it could also send a, a wireless signal to that to start recording and to open up the mic and then stuff like that i mean it's it's it could be possible and with an algorithm that regulates uh, the eq and stuff like that mm -hmm. while it's recording maybe that that's another thing that <laughs> I'm just taking away jobs right now. <laughs> no, that's fine, man. We don't need a microphone I mean, guy. We I mean, don't seriously, need that, IT. We don't need that. That's that's how you that's how you start creating what's possible. I mean, at the end of the day, when I did the film, it was something like that. I don't need this. I don't need that. I need that, 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 that because I didn't have any money for that. <laughs> so it kind of made me realize what I need. That you don't really need those yeah. things, and that's that's what constraints does. It yeah. usually opens. Opens your eyes to stuff that you think, oh shit, I didn't really need that. <laughs> but there are some other things that uh, you do need people for. Well, like their their critical thinking. Yeah. See, I think I think uh, you know when you touch upon critical thinking, and you know we already talked about this. A lot of a lot of people, I think, of like you and I, we're neglected because we're critical thinkers, <laughs> as opposed to being embraced. Yeah, because you know a robot's not gonna have critical thinking skills. <laughs> a lot of things has to happen, you know, for that to 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 actually happen. But um, I think I even think that even us, you know, misfits, we're gonna be neglect, still be neglected for being critical thinkers. <laughs> but, I mean, I I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. Even that, even though I th I know there's a bunch of people who are saying, oh, we're gonna have more time because robots take over some jobs. We're gonna have more time to. You know, to be creative and all this stuff. Yeah, that's the, that's the utopia, but uh, but humans are fuckers. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> a lot of people, if a lot of people had nothing to do, they would probably waste it watching TV. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, most of the people are gonna waste it watching TV or spending money <laughs> if they have money. I know. Instead of I, think... I don't know, like creating building another room to their house or have we talked about that topic before we kind of talked talked about it right but we didn't actually do a whole episode on that yeah we haven't 
Come back. We should do that. Yeah, we should do that. <laughs> if you, what happens when you don't have to make a living? What would you do? Exactly. Yeah, we haven't done that. We touched upon it just a little bit. Yeah. but Well, we're going to have to wait a few episodes because we have we have a f another few coming up where we're going to have some guests on here. Um, <laughs> so it's going to be fun. We're going to have who? Gato Pan. Gato Pan. Gato Snowflake. Pan. A.K. Snowflake. AK Snowflake. I, might, I might tell that story. When we're on there, but uh, I can't, I, and that's not good. <laughs> but um, and then we have uh, another buddy of mine. We're going to talk about uh, the the Renaissance, the digital Renaissance, basically in organizations. So a lot of people, you know, as you know, even small businesses are not digital. You know, high on digital yet. They still mm -hmm. operate pre pretty much by paper, pen and paper. <laughs> And all that they do, but um, you know, I think, and I think that topic is really important because it connects with the topic of AI um, and the topic of uh, the internet things, which we did about two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, because that's that's going to be a future where even even at home we're going to have it, not just that at work, but I think at work it's going to become it, usually that's how it usually happens. It happens first at work, and then you know for the rest of society. Um, you want to add anything else to this topic? Mm, not that I can think of. Um, all right, so so conclusions? <laughs> you just have me thinking about a lot of different scenarios that I might just start writing for a movie. <laughs> like a lot of different things that could happen. But I mean, at the end of it, that's what a what a movie is, a science fiction movie is, it's, it's usually... It it's lets, a, a view into the future. It's a view into potential future. Yeah. A what if. It's a what if. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's a what if. That's, uh, probably that's why I love science fiction. <laughs> because it's a what if. It's a what if. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, my conclusion is that, yes, we might, we might be competing with, with robots, but I don't think it's going to be like people think about it. Um, for that to happen, I think, in terms of technology... A lot of other components need to be in place. And if it does happen, I don't think it's going to be... It might happen in our lifetimes, but I don't think it's going to be like in 10 years <laughs> or 20 years. <laughs> I, I, I see ourselves, yes, having robot handlers like we do right now. We'll have more capabilities. I don't see ourselves having more leisure time necessarily. <laughs> Um, I think we're going to ha all have to learn how to code because I think that's going to be very critical. If we start programming our own robots, I think that's going to unleash a whole lot of progress no, but, but and how, a whole lot of madness. How society is right now is that all the robots are going to be like very user-friendly. Uh, yeah, no, but but imagine because imagine, it's already happening, people programming their own things. Yeah, There's a reason why everybody's like, oh, you need to learn to code. It's not because we need, we're going to keep coding the internet. There's enough of fuckers doing that. But the next step is coding the next the next paradigm and it's has to do with virtual reality, augmented reality and augmented humans and robots. That's that's really how how it's moving. And the uh, you know, the ambient computing thing where it's basically all our devices are connected. I mean, and that's <laughs> that's where we're going. <laughs> that's how the car knows to take you to the T D bar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, I think we'll leave it at that and um uh, you know, if you guys have any, well, no, you, you should have any opinions on this. We want you to have opinions on this because it's important. So send us a send us a comment on SoundCloud or Twitter at Jorge Barba and Adrian Pedrin. And, um, you know, that's it. We'll that's see it. you next week.